Rule number 13, and perhaps the most basic rule of them all, the subject of a verb is in the nominative case. Let's review a couple of terms here. First, I often start off teaching Latin with the basic definition of a subject. In the beginning, we see that subjects tend to be the noun that's doing the action of the verb. So in the sentence, the boy is sitting, puer sedet. The boy is doing the action of the verb. He's doing the sitting, so he's the subject. But when we get into more complex grammar, especially sentences that involve the passive voice, we run into this problem. The boy was summoned. Puer arquesitos est. Here the verb is arquesitos est, and the boy is the subject, but he's no longer doing the action. The subject of a passive verb is, by definition, receiving the action. So instead of saying that the subject is the noun that does the action, let's instead say that the subject controls the verb. Let's talk about what I mean by controls. I've already talked about subject verb agreement in rule number nine, check that out please, where the subject agrees with the verb in number and person. Or in other words, the subject controls the number and person of the verb. So here the boy sits puer sedet, but the boys sit pueri sedent. And puer arquesitos est, but puelai, the girls, arquesitai sunt. When we change the subject, we also change the verb. So in Latin, this subject controls the verb. Side note, you might think that this is obvious, but there are some languages called ergative languages where what we could consider to be the object controls the verb. In Latin, we put the subject into the nominative case. And in fact, this is the main and practically only use of the nominative case. Here's a list of the nominative case for the five different declensions in both the singular and plural. For the most part, there's no pattern, but what if I told you that, with some exceptions, like the first declension and some thirds, the nominative case will end in an S in the singular. We see it in the second, fourth, and fifth declensions, and also in some of the nominatives for third declension nouns, like these here. Nevertheless, the nominative is the name by which we know all nouns, and thus it's the form that the noun is listed under in the dictionary. Here's an example from the Gallic War. Caesar reinum transire de creverat. Caesar had determined to cross the Rhine. Caesar is in the nominative case because it's the subject of the verb de creverat. Sometimes you'll see the nominative case used in exclamations, as in Cicero here. Ecce tua literae de varone. Behold, your letter about Varro. But exclamations are usually reserved for the accusative case. This has been rule 13. The subject of a verb is in the nominative case.